Jeremy, give me a thumbs up. You're okay? Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This is uh, a subject that I've been thinking about for a long time. I wanted to share my knowledge with you. I, I really want to create a wonderful webinar for you with lots and lots of questions. I'm going to do it a little differently than I've done my webinars in the past. Normally what I do is do my presentation and then answer questions that come up in the chat box later, but we're going to be able to, you know, any kind of questions you have, um, you can definitely put your, your questions in the chat box and I'll try to address them. And also uh, one month post this webinar, I'm going to invite anybody who is here tonight to attend again, just to, just to go on to a question and answer period. So if you felt like you didn't uh, get all the information you're looking for tonight, we'll have that opportunity to speak once again. Uh, one thing I'm going to get you to do, if you don't already have it, is a paper and pen, because we're going to do a little tiny bit of work tonight, so that's going to be great. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to share a story with you. Last February, I had a client uh, somewhere in the deep south of the United States of America who called me, and um, his name was Peter, and Peter said to me, I have to tell you, I had a dream last night and I dreamt that I heard your name and that I was to give you a call and you were supposed to be the person that was going to help me with my nutrition. So we ended up working together. He had wonderful success with the program that I put him on. And it just goes to show you that as practitioners out there, there are so many people who need help and there are so many um and you have such a gift. So whatever your gift is, because I know tonight we've got nutritionists and chiropractors and osteopaths and naturopaths. We have all kinds of different modalities. But this story really represented to me that when somebody is ready to have your service, they're going to find you regardless. And once you have um, all of your, you know, your everything in place, you'll be able to take really, really good care of them. So I'm going to switch over now to my PowerPoint. I'm just going to share my screen with you. There we go. And we're just going to go over to start from the beginning. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to move myself out of here for a little bit. So yeah, it's called The Holistic Entrepreneur, The Art of Launching a Nutrition Business. And I've been doing this for several years right now. So uh, get ready because we're going to have a lot of information. I want also to make this webinar for you a really wonderful learning and teaching, not a selling thing, something that you can take some of these ideas and uh, start to create them and you know put them into your own online business. Um, as we know, the world has changed and everything has moved online. My business pretty much went right online after March of last year. I spent quite a bit of money getting some coaching, uh, which I'll talk about so that I could continue my business uh, and make it really accessible for people online. So therefore, you can work with anybody all over the world. And it just makes it so wonderful for you to, to be able to have that opportunity. So we'll give you all the tips for that. So we're going to talk about my story habits of success, uh, social media, getting all those clients, developing rapport, powerful questions, goal setting, and how you personally show up. So this is me on the right-hand side. Um, and on the left-hand side, that's my sister, Joanne. I grew up with uh, eight brothers and sisters. So there was five boys and four girls. Our family was about you know, we were all about a year and a year and a half apart from each other. So growing up in the 60s, I had to take quite a bit of responsibility because I was the second oldest of all the girls. So that meant that we had to do a lot of cooking, a lot of cleaning. And I love to do all that stuff. And I learned at a very, very early age how to prepare food. Um, so if, for all those of you who don't know me, I am a, a, a holistic nutritionist here in Toronto. I love making food. I love to learn how to bake bread, how to make my own yogurt, how to sprout my own sprouts. My biggest challenge was making sure that my siblings didn't touch any of my food, but I was fascinated with nutrition as a small child 
and good health. And I probably was one of the first persons ever to start taking vitamin C when I was like about 14 years old, because that was in the years that health food stores started to appear. And I was fascinated by nutrition and, you know, making my own shampoos and all of that. And eventually my mom said to me, you know what, I think you really, really should go and study nutrition. So off the university, I went and I studied nutrition and I was there for four years and I graduated as nutritionist. I decided to not go the full five years and become a dietitian because I didn't want to have, uh, you know, the, the rules of the doctors imposed on me because I always was more of a forward thinker and I wanted anybody that I worked with, I wanted to have more of a holistic approach to, to help them. So I uh, basically graduated from school as a nutritionist. And the day I walked out of that school, I thought to myself, well, the education's been amazing. Um, not so much on nutrition, more on the science of nutrition, which is a shame because I ended up going back to school to study holistic nutrition. Because when you get a science degree in nutrition, you learn about amino acids and diseases and protocols, vitamins, but not proper eating or lifestyle or any of these types of things. So I was kind of left on my own. I was like 22 years old, ready to go and become this famous nutritionist. And yet I didn't know what to do. I had no idea where to start, but I had from the time I was 16 years old, I had worked for Dominion stores, um, which, you know, that was one of the leading grocery stores in Canada. And then of course, Loblaws kind of came in and took over. And Dominion stores had a, uh, a pilot project, which, which I got to participate in. And they opened up uh, the very first health food store called Nature's Cupboard. And Nature's Cupboard was built in Mississauga and one in Markham. And I ran that health food store. And it was great because I got to use my nutrition, but I didn't get to use my entrepreneurial skills because I felt like I was wanting to do more for people than prescribing vitamins and telling them about wheat germ and, you know, aloe vera juices and different spices. I wanted more, but you know, that was what was happening at the time. And when I was 25 years old, I had my first child and I ended up to have uh, two more children. And by the time I was 30, I was finished. And from 30 to 40 years old, I'm now 62, but from 30 to 40, I dabbled a little bit in nutrition. I volunteered at the YMCA I um, had my own little catering business for a couple of the hospitals. Some of my friends were doctors there. So I had a little, little catering business, but my heart was really aching to make a difference in people's lives. And I think many of you here have this gift, have this curiosity, have this wanting to, you know, to impact other people's lives. Because for me, one of the biggest things is I want to be able to go to bed at night and, and say to myself, I made a difference in someone's life. And that was really, really important to me. So um, I wanted to pursue that, but I really wasn't sure how I was going to do that. Anyways, so here I am, 40 years old. And now what am I going to do? My kids are off to university. And a friend of mine who was diagnosed with breast cancer, she asked me if she knew of anybody that could help her. And I knew of a woman that was doing at the time something called live blood cell analysis. So I took my friend. Wanda to this lady who did live blood cell analysis. And I, at the time was a marathon runner. And of course my nutrition expertise at university didn't teach us that diet Coke and bagels were bad for you. We all thought that, you know, having eight meals a day and pasta was the fuel that you, you ate when you ran marathons. I mean, just for fun, I had my blood done too. And here's my friend having full on chemo radiation and my blood looked worse than hers did, which was so shocking to me. Plus I had some digestive issues. I had really, really bad psoriasis. Um, I thought I was really healthy, but in fact, I wasn't. So I made some changes and I was fascinated by this live blood. So I jumped on an airplane. I went to California, I took a course. I bought this 20,000 US dollar microscope. I came home with it. And it sat on the floor because I didn't know how to get started. I had no idea what I was going to do. And I didn't even want to take the microscope out of the box because I felt like I forgot everything that I learned. But I had a chat with one of my friends and she said, why don't you send 20 people, send, send 20 letters to 20 people and do, and do some live blood cell analysis on people for 20 bucks? Well, that was in October of 2000. By the time Christmas rolled around, I had done a hundred people for 20 bucks 
And all of a sudden, I learned how to communicate with clients. I learned how to become more professional, which we're going to talk about tonight. I learned how that each person has a unique health history, has a unique biochemistry, and each person needs to be treated and taken care of differently. And I learned, and I kept doing this and doing this and doing this. And the year I opened up my practice was the year 2001. And I took a, took a little uh, ad out in the local newspaper. I live in the beaches here in Toronto. It was called the Beaches Metro News. I took an ad out, I spent $200 and I got a client from City Hall who then subsequently sent me like 20 people. So ads do work. Now they're different today than they were before, but I still do ads and they do need to repeat over and over again. People need to recognize you. You need to have many, many touches before they actually want to do some business with you. So I, I ran the ad, I got lots of clients and I decided I am just a, a total fake. So I thought I have to go back to school and study holistic nutrition because I could remember the protocols that I would could use from university, but I wasn't really, uh, I didn't know how to treat a person from a holistic perspective. Like what kind of diet does that look like? So I went back to school. I studied holistic nutrition with three teenage boys uh, part-time uh, in the evening. And then because I was already over 40, going back to school and studying was very challenging for me. But I graduated, taught my class. I was a valedictorian. And what I was able to do as I was in school is I would take these little ideas and I would put them on a piece of paper. And then I thought, you know, one day, you know, the worst thing people are going to say is no. I sent a pitch to breakfast television. So this is back now. We're talking, well, that was 20, 22 years ago, whatever year that was, 80s, the 80s. I sent a pitch to them and I sent like four pitches to them. They kept losing it. And I finally said to the girl, if you want, I'll come down to the, to the, to the studio today. And she looked me over and she said, you're on tomorrow. You're on, you're on tomorrow. So I had a really great break. Uh, I did a six minute live blood cell demonstration on TV. And believe it or not, that day I was training for a marathon. And after the show, I had to run 18 miles with my friend. Well, my husband was home and the phone did not stop ringing. And I got so many clients from that. So because this is constant, constant exposure. And then I would learn something new in psychology disease course, or I mean, I started making these really crazy names for these pitches. And this is one thing I have to say to you, wh whatever your topic is that you want to pitch, it has to have a catchy name. So I did uh, hangover helpers, uh, April allergies, um, I did, uh, the five, the seven dwarfs of menopause. I did, uh, the five new food groups, the 10 top tips for, for losing your, the 10 top tips on preventing gray hair, the 10, the, people like these numbers 10. So I did a lot of these shows. I ended up developing quite a relationship with breakfast television, and then they got bought over by Rogers. And then that kind of was a little bit of a, it sort of, it ceased to exist for that, but that was fine. It was great. I got on. There are so many TV shows right now that are always looking for new content. And if you've got some kind of uh, modality or expertise in, in your field that you feel that would be really beneficial to other people, they'll do it. Believe it or not, I don't know if you remember this, but I had gone and studied in Atlanta and I bought a foot detox, a foot bath detox. And I went on the show and it, you know, the water turned black and it caused quite a bit of controversy at the TV station because people are calling in and saying, this is basically bull, this is things just it's fixed and all that stuff. Anyways, it turned out that, you know, when you get a little bit of uh, people kind of poo-pooing the idea, it actually brought more attention. So I was a little bit out there and I think you have to sometimes, you have to go and be a little bit forward with these certain things. So be a little bit of a daredevil. Don't sit back on the fence because People remember when you do something a little bit different. Anyways, from there, I ended up uh, working uh, in a medical office down here in the beaches. I was the in-house nutritionist with about eight medical doctors. I was there for, for several years. One of the other things that I did was I went to all the different companies. I went to Dell, I went to Frito-Lay, I went to Pepsi. And I offered to do, and I did a lot of them, free lunch and learns. And this is something that if you're not doing this right now, you could certainly, by all means, approach them. They do a one hour lunch and learn, where in the old days, people would come into the room, 
they would bring their lunch and you would do a presentation on a subject, something that was really interesting, something that applied to them. And every single time I do a presentation, it's always about what is the pain and what is the solution? So if it's kidney stones, here's a solution. If it's weight, here's a solution. If it's depression, here's a solution. So it's always giving them the pain points and then giving them the solution. And I did all these things and got invited to, you know, they used to have those holistic wellness days where clients or, or the, the people that worked for all these companies, they'd have a, a whole day where they had four hours and they could walk around and you'd have a chiropractor and a nutritionist and you could get your back rubbed or you could have your, you know, shiatsu treatment done. It was free for them. So I did this a lot and I used to bring my live blood cell uh, microscope and, and do a lot of that. And I met a woman there uh, who is the HR director at Dell. And it just goes to show you when you treat everybody with kindness and respect, you never know who you're going to meet. And Carol, who was the HR director said, I love what you're doing. And I think we should bring this into Dell. So for four, seven years, I worked at Dell computers, uh, either one day a month or four days a month. And I would work from seven o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night. Carol would set up all my appointments. I had my own little room. They would just pay me by cash, credit card, um, fee, you know, or check back then I didn't have a, a debit machine. And then I just kept developing this rapport with these people. And then that eventually, eventually closed down. So after I left the doctor's office, I mean, it was a lot of work and I really put a lot of work and a lot of effort into this. And it was fun, a lot, lot of fun work, but also every time I would do it, I would learn more and more about people and learn more and more, more about myself. And I also knew that as a holistic practitioner, you know, you have to heal the healer. So I needed to do some emotional work on myself. So I used some Rubabed remedies from Biomed, uh, cleared up my complete uh, uh, psoriasis, which was great. Um, and now I work with mostly I do the energy medicine, psychosomatic energetic medicine. I work with metabolic balance, which is a program out of Germany that is a program designed to lower inflammation help people to lose weight and to um, balance out their hormones. It's a phenomenal program. It's in 40, year, in 40 countries. I've been the top coach for several years. It's a great, great business because the results are incredible. People love it. And then I also uh, just do nutrition consulting. I do IgG testing, which is food sensitivity. I do the Dutch testing and or I'll just do a family uh consult when they want to all come in and do that so it's been a pretty interesting journey for me I also bought the license to uh, own the license to practice metabolic balance in Hong Kong and of course you know they don't they all speak English so that's not a problem but I found that everywhere I went that, that my growth would just continue to grow and I seized every opportunity that I can I spent a lot of money on a lot of things that I shouldn't have invested in uh, I believe that all of you sitting here tonight, you have to remember that you need to spend money to make money. And as I said, when COVID hit last year, I hired two coaches right off the bat, a lot of money, but I thought this is the time to really, to learn, to change my brand, to change my image, to learn things while we're at home. And I've never looked back, but you definitely, definitely have to, you know, you have to spend money to, to make money. So uh, today I see clients every single day. I do lots of Zoom people. Um, I do have clients that come in with a mask and I'm totally fine with that. And uh, as I said, I want to, and I'm sure you all do, you want to go to bed at night feeling that you've made a difference in someone's life. And especially regardless of what your modality is, there are so many people in need of people services today. I walked into the health food store the other day and I said to the lady, what are the two things that people come in here to buy? And she said, sleeping and anxiety medication or supplementation. So this is a big one. People, you know, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of help, regardless if you do touch therapy or you do, do nutrition or you're a chiropractor, it doesn't really matter. What people want is somebody to listen to them and somebody to really understand where they're coming from. So my promise to you tonight is to share my secrets to success. I always use the analogy that if you were climbing the ladder to heaven, uh, you can't step on people's toes on the way up. You need to help other people up there too. So I will share all my secrets because I think that each one of us, there's so much work out there for all of us. 
and we need to work together as a team. And this is why one of the things I love about metabolic balance is that we have a group of people that ensure that we have success with each other and bounce ideas off of it. It's really important. Um, I know it's hard for starting, you know, work from home right away because you don't have that, that sort of, what's that word I'm looking at, the net or that platform, but it's really important to have a, a group of people that you can communicate with. I still stay in touch with my nutrition friends that I went to not only to university, but when I went to holistic nutrition. So uh, if I don't share my secret tonight, then you can ask me what it is and I'll tell that to you later. But here's the interesting thing. I know you're probably looking at me and going, oh yeah, well, you know, this is great, but I got to tell you something. I was not always confident. That is a hundred percent for sure. Because many, many years ago, growing up in the sixties, I having eight brothers and sisters felt very unconfident. And, you know, you didn't hear your parents say, oh my goodness, you're amazing. You know, it's, it was all about what did Joanne do? What did Mark do? What did, you know, I wasn't academic. I wasn't athletic. I was a December baby. So I always say that I was a little bit behind than everybody else. Um, so this was a big thing for me because I was faking it all the way. I pretended that I had my shit together for lack of better words. And so I decided that if I wanted to be a make money at this business, but be confident, then I better take care of myself. I better figure out a way to build my confidence. And so I really struggled. I carried little dictionaries around with me. Um, I shied away from things. I wasn't the popular kid. I was trying to get on the uh, cheerleading team, but I was too short. Um, I wasn't fast. Uh, I was more of a earthy, touchy-feely person and history, geography, and math were just like difficult and challenging for me. I like that, you know, hands-on stuff. You know, if I need to change the tire, I got to do it myself. I can't, I, you can't tell me how to do it. So I'm a very hands-on person. So I decided that, well, if I'm going to be successful as a nutritionist, I better get my shit together and I better figure out a way in how I can become more confident. And so I read every book I could get my hands on. I went to seminars all over Canada, United States. I watched so many different things because I thought, if you looked at me back then, you would have thought I was confident, but I can ensure to you that I wasn't confident. And this was definitely having a huge impact on my life. And I knew that I was keeping myself behind the gate. I wasn't allowing myself to move forward because I didn't feel good about myself. And so I put together this book and with this book, I cover everything, you know, how you get your confidence, where did it go? How did it, you know, get torn away from me and what things did I actually do to get it back again? And, you know, you can always pick this book up. I will talk about a couple of things from this book in a moment, but yeah, just note that I wasn't. So I wrote this book. It took me three years to write the book uh, after it was all written. My youngest son, Russell, said to me, mom, the information's great, but the book sucks. You know? So we sat down for one year and we rewrote the whole book. And then I had some friends that helped me edit it. And I was pretty proud to put that together and pretty proud to say that, you know what? Yeah, I actually say I really love myself now, but it took a lot of work to get me to this place. And I think all of us can... Um, use a little bit of that. One thing I've also noticed about clients for your, you know, potential businesses is that I really believe that at the, at the base of all clients sort of health struggles is they don't love themselves and they don't have, and they don't feel worthy. So I think no matter what modality it is, if we can help them build that, that's where you're going to get your compliance. That's where you're going to get people coming back again and again to, you know, see you. I've got clients for 25 years who still coming, who still keep coming back because I've, they basically learned to like and trust me and I've learned to like and trust them. And we've got this incredible network that works for us. So it's really important that uh, we develop this rapport with other people. So um, there's nothing wrong with not having any confidence. And I think that if we can just learn a few tricks along the way, then that's going to be really beneficial to you.
So where do you start? <clears throat> where are you right now? What do you want? What's holding you back? What are you most afraid of? Are you using the negative self-talk? And are you using the seven deadly words? So now I want you to write on your piece of paper, what do you want? So just take a second and write it down. What do you want? What do you really, really want? Okay, so that question is important because if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. So it's important to know what you want. You have to articulate it. If I wanted to get married, then I would have written down, I am married, but I remember years ago writing it down and wanted to be tall, handsome, you know, blah, 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 blah. You have to let the universe know what you want because you can't expect somebody to knock on your door. You have to articulate. You have to create what it is you want. We can't be loosey-goosey. It's also knowing where you're going to go. So if you got in your car and you were going to drive to New York City, you're going to get lost. But if you have a map with you, if you have a destination when you get there, you're not going to get lost. So you have to know what do you want and what's holding you back. So now take a second and write down what's holding you back. Is it you? Is it somebody else? Is, is it the negative self-talk that comes in here? And what are you afraid of? I can't begin to tell you how many times I've heard people say they're afraid of success. That's just such an interesting concept to be afraid of success but maybe you're afraid to fail. There are no mistakes in life. There are just lessons. So, you know, when I didn't get on breakfast television one time, I thought, well, I'll go to CTV news. I'll go to a different TV show. And I did, because if they're going to say no, somebody else is going to say yes. Are you using the negative self-talk? In my book, I also wrote about these seven deadly words in your vocabulary. And I want you to write them down. They are can't, should, need, must, try, if, and there's another one. I'll think of that. Should, can't, need, must, try, or Sorry is one of them too. Okay, I'll come back to this. But these words, let's look at the word can't. You know, can't lives on won't street. Can't, if you don't want to be a cantaholic. When you use the word um, try, I'm going to try to get this business running online. I'm going to try to get some clients. You've got a 50% chance of backing out of that right now. So it's not try, it's when I get 10 clients, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I remember distinctly being on the boardwalk with my husband before my first TV show that I was accepted on. And he said to me, if you ever get on breakfast television, what are you going to do? And I said, it corrected him. I said, no, it's not if. It's when I get on breakfast television, this is what I'm going to do. So when you use the word must, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. When you use the word need, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. When you were, use the word should, you're just shitting on yourself. So be careful how you speak to yourself because how you speak to yourself affects everything. We want to use positive self-talk. Now, I personally love to journal every day. I personally make sure that I take time for self-care. I personally make sure that I read inspiring things and I personally avoid negative self-talk and I've had to clean up a lot of my relationships that were negative, because if I ever told us, you know, one of my secrets to one of my friends said, I'm going to do this and this, and they didn't support me, I thought that's not the kind of person you want. The kind of people you want to surround yourself with right now is if you were to win $10 million and your friend says to you, oh my God, that's amazing. That's the kind of friends you want, because we need to surround ourselves with like-minded people. So you may have to find, you may find yourself, um, you know, and you know what they say, when one door closes, another one opens. So don't worry about that.
but as a holistic person, you know, wanting to help other individuals in the world, we are going to have some flack. My siblings think I'm a whack job. Uh, frankly, Scarlett, I don't really care, but I have more energy than they all do. So, and you know, so it, it doesn't really matter. They have a choice or they want to do certain things. Um, that's okay. But we do have to kind of definitely walk our talk here for sure. So I guess, first of all, before we get into the meat of what I wanted to talk to you tonight, and that's really how you do a session, is how you're developing this online presence. And before last year, I really did had a bare minimum online presence, but we do have Instagram, we do have LinkedIn, we have the website, we have Facebook, uh, and you have to spend money to make money. So in regards to Instagram, uh, some of you might think this is just uh, a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. There is an art to it. I'm still learning this art. I hired somebody to teach me how to use Instagram. Instagram does want you to be posting a lot and you have to post things that are interesting and of interest to other people. Uh, and one thing that wouldn't be advantage here is just taking a picture of your family or taking a picture of your cat or your dog, but something that remember the pain and a solution when it comes to Instagram. So if you've got, if you made a shake that's going to increase your energy, you could post it. But that is something that you could definitely take a look at on how you could uh, market yourself. I love doing Instagram. I love doing videos. You got to keep them under a minute. Uh, when you are taking, if you don't know this already, but when you're doing an Instagram video, the camera has to be this way and not this way. So that was something that I didn't know how to do. LinkedIn is a great avenue for getting out there into the professional world, of course. A website is very important to have. If you don't have one, there are different templates that you can do. But people, once they hear about you, um, they're going to want to go and check you out because you know how it is. People will look at everybody and, and they're going to definitely go check you out. And then, of course, Facebook is a, a, a platform to not only advertise, um, and of course, we have to be careful what we advertise here because this can this could actually bite you in the butt if you post something that's not professional. Um, I try to keep my Facebook post very, you know, I have a creative health post. Um, one thing I also have, and I encourage you to do this right now, if you have a group of people that you're working with, is to develop their private Facebook. So I have a private Facebook for my metabolic balance people. I have a private Facebook for my Peloton. I'm addicted to the Peloton. So we po I post things on exercise and nutrition and fat and you know a percentage of body fat. And I have a private Facebook for my Hong Kong coaches. So, um, and I'm continually feeding into that and looking for content because people want to feel connected, especially if you know they're they're looking for information from you. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I started very slow. It took me a long time to to get this up, but these are really important things. So Instagram, for sure, the LinkedIn, the website, Instagram, I've learned there's so many things you can do with it. I haven't mastered that one hardly at all, um, but everything should be under one minute and it should be fresh and it should be easily, if you're doing a video, you have to be able to hear people and obviously look really professional. So this is your, your basically your front line of getting things going because you know, if people don't know who you are, you have to get yourself out there. And then particularly with Instagram, you go and look at other people's posts, you make comments on it. Um, I've allowed a couple of people into my private Facebook group from other parts of Canada, and I've got like clients out of it. So um, just because they were interested in the metabolic balance one. So I've let them in. And yeah, then they became my clients. And it's been it's been incredible. So um, yeah, I love I love that. So when you're meeting online for the first time, I, I took a course uh, several years ago called Verbal Aikido, and that was the, the art of communication. And one of the things he talked about in the very first meeting was this. So when somebody walks in the room or when you meet somebody online in the first few minutes, you have three seconds to impress them. You have 30 seconds for a total perception and you have three minutes to believe in them. So think about that yourself. Let's just say you walked into, I don't know, a jewelry store or you walked into a shoe store. You know, if you like this person, 
right from the very beginning, you are more likely to buy from them than not. If you walked into that shoe store or jewelry store and they didn't even say hello to you, I don't know about you, but I usually walk back out of that store. And they don't have to be, you know, push and shoving and, and you know, jamming information down to you. But it's really, this is such an interesting thing because you will feel this connection with these people. And even though most of our business now is being done online, you're going to feel that connection. And it's really important that you, you know, take the time to get to know people, uh, make sure that when you're doing your meeting, that it's in a place that doesn't have any distractions. You don't have kids running behind you. You know, the doors are closed. The cupboards are closed. Um, I like this place where I, here I've got this painting of, I was in India. So it's a nice little painting I have behind me. Um, so something that's kind of clean and uh, free from distraction. So just remember that the three, 30 seconds to impress, 30 seconds to total perception and three minutes to believe in them. Now, developing rapport, that's another thing. When you're speaking to people, let's just say you went to a cocktail party or you go to a restaurant, and I can't wait for that to happen one of these days because, my goodness, um, when you're speaking to people, developing that rapport has a lot to do with their physiology. You can see how people are. You know that old, when you put your hands in front of your heart, they don't trust you. So when people have open hands, that they're open, but when they have a closed fist, they're very, very close. You have to just pay attention to that. Also, when you're sitting with people in a face-to-face -face room situation, I did learn that you don't want to be on a different level than the other person. You can mimic some of their uh, postures just to make it more comfortable. But a lot of the rapport is about the physiology. So how are you showing up? Uh, I want to share a story with you. I had a client come recently who is also a nutritionist and I'm going to tell you right off the bat I would never in my life hire this person she looked like she didn't wash her hair for like two weeks her clothes were completely disheveled uh completely unorganized a nice lady um but I thought you are whatever whatever modality whatever business we're representing we do have to we do have to walk our talk. And, you know, it's like that whole thing. You're not going to hire a fitness person who's overweight. You're not going to hire, you know, your weight trainer who's doesn't even lift weights. We have to really walk our talk. And, you know, that I means hard, obviously, during COVID. I think all of us experienced overeating and over drinking and not enough exercise, like all of those things. But I think when it comes back down to it, we really do have to walk our talk. And how are we showing up? I also had years ago, I used to take co-op students. I had a girl come in uh, who had colitis, unfortunately for her. Uh, and uh, she fell asleep in my session with this gentleman and her colitis was acting up. Not only was she sleeping while we were chatting, but her stomach was making so much noise. And when she did wake up, she happened to notice that he brought a magazine in with him and it was on men's health. And she made a comment with, oh my God, that is the stupidest magazine. I thought to you're fired. That's not happening. I don't care if he's reading pentos. That's not my business. I'm not here to judge this person. So uh, we really have to show up and look professional because that's going to build our like and trust with all these people. And of course, you know, we need to listen, especially when people are telling you their situation or their dilemma or their health problems uh, on Zoom or any of your other ones, TV. You need to make sure that you're listening. So not acknowledge, look at them. You really need to truly, truly listen. Because a lot of us want to just jump in and kind of tell them, this is the protocol I think you are. We really want them to listen. So coming back to whatever modality you're practicing or wanting to get into, I believe that people are coming to you and to me because they want somebody to acknowledge them. They want somebody to talk to. They want somebody to listen to them. And that's our job. And it's great. I mean, I've heard all stories in life and I find it absolutely fascinating. The nice thing about it is because I was doing a lot of hot yoga, I was able to process all that information. I don't carry it around with me. So it never really impacted me physically. It did at a time, but I was able to. So successful strategy, whether you're doing this in person, whether you're doing this online, you can't judge your clients. I don't give a shit if they smoke pot. I don't care if they do stuff. 
but I am never going to judge them. So I need to really emphasize this. But what I will say here, it's not what you're doing, it's what you're missing. You're not getting enough water, you're not getting enough fruit, you're not getting enough vegetables. So I focus on the positive as opposed to the negative. So if I had a lady come in with her kid and that child is covered in pimples, which I've seen before, instead of judging the mom or dad for maybe not giving them the best food, um, what I would do here is I would say, perhaps your mom can get you some oranges and some grapefruits and some mango and papaya and some walnuts. So just add, so always add in to that because if you start judging clients, they're, you're gonna lose them. They, they already feel guilty that they're drinking too much coffee or they're eating too many chips or they're eating, they're not you know, drinking their water. They're not having a poo every day. They want somebody to help them to not judge them. Very important. And don't judge yourself. We're not perfect. None of us is perfect here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this. These are together here. You know, I've been doing this business now for 22 years. And I can honestly say in 22 years, I might have looked at another competitor's website for five minutes. That's it. I don't care what they're doing. I have my own unique skill. You have your own unique skill. I never, ever compare myself to anybody. And I never judge myself. I judge myself based on my own self, but I don't compare myself to my peers. Now, I'm still going to educate myself. I'm still going to compete with my peers. We have a competition every year with Men About Balance, but we do it in a very fun kind of way, but I'm not gonna beat myself up if I'm not able to participate in that. But it's really important to never judge them, don't judge yourself, and don't compare yourself to your peers because this one will drive you absolutely crazy. And you know what? Everybody's at, I'm at a different age bracket right now. So I have different clients. There are so many people out there who need so much physical help. And the longer this COVID goes on, the more work for you, the more business. You just have to tap into it. You have to find it. And how do you find it? Well, I mean, I know right now we're not getting together, but one of the things that I have done, and, and I'll, I'm going to jump into it right now because maybe it's on the next slide. Let me just see. Oh yeah, no, I need to go back for a second. Uh, I'll go back. Um, is I do this thing called salting and that's literally like salt, salt shaker. Salting is, I used to leave here and walk over to yoga, do a 90 minute yoga class, walk home and I'd meet my friends in there and they would say something to me like, oh, how you doing? I'd be, oh my God, I'm so busy. It's been so great. I've got this client just lost 55 pounds. And then I'd say to her, oh, I've got to go. So salting is dropping a little bit of tidbit of information. Maybe you're, maybe you're an osteopath. Maybe you say to someone, oh my God, I absolutely love my job. The guy could finally walk after he wasn't able to walk for six months and, and just leave it. So continually, because people are going to want to know what it is you're doing and eventually they're going to come back. And it takes a lot of touches for a client. I did a, uh, actually a webinar two weeks ago on high blood pressure and I have a client for at least 10 years and she finally decided to do the program and I thought this is crazy after all this time she finally decided to do it because we continually I was salting on her all the time talking to her about metabolic balance talking to her about hormones talking to her about you know the Dutch test talking to her about different things she's seen me for a long time and then one day she decided to just go through there so continually you know even if in a group you know you go to a cocktail party in the future and like what are you doing well I, I transform lives like I, I I get people's life back so find that 30 second elevator speech that's going to set you apart from other people I always like to say I like to educate motivate and inspire people to to good health um, but you know at the same time I also like to share with my clients I'm not perfect I like to eat potato chips I like to I like to have pizza on occasion. I believe you have to have balance. And I think clients need to know that you're not perfect. And I always will kind of make fun of myself. Um, and I'll tell them, yeah, I, I eat that stuff sometimes, but I make sure that I balance it out with the exercise. Oopsie, losing my earphone. I balance it out with, you know, happy lifestyle, making sure that I take care of myself in the best possible way. So it's, again, it comes back down to not, not judging yourself, not comparing yourself to other people. Um, this one actually has really saved me because 
honestly, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are our competition, but I don't know, cause I don't look at it. And I think that's a really healthy place to be. I have looked at certain things to get ideas, but I'm not going to compare myself to that. So I, that's been very freeing for me. So where I want to spend a lot of time right now, I'm just going to check my time here because I don't want to overwhelm you. One of the things that I've learned as a nutritionist uh, and an energy medicine practitioner and a live blood cell analyst and a life coach, because that's certainly turned into that. I mean, I have clients who walk in the door and say, hey, can you make me a cup of tea? It's like, really? <laughs> Anyways, it, it happens. Um, I have a client come in from Guelph one day and said, I'm just going to have a nap on your couch before we start. It's like, okay. <laughs> and I work from home. So it's very interesting. But one thing I learned was to become a detective. And the reason I decided to spend time talking about this tonight is when I became a nutritionist, my friend said to me, you should spend about a thousand dollars and you should go and visit five practitioners, five people that you want to, you know, do business with. So I booked like, I don't know, a, a, a whole bunch of people. And I spent like a thousand dollars on that back in the time. And one guy didn't even look at me. Another guy, you know, was so disheveled, I wouldn't even want to be there. Another woman, all I could smell was bacon in her house the whole entire time, which was very distracting for me because it's not something that I really like to smell, uh, except on Christmas Day when my kids are eating only. Um, so I, I learned what I liked about, about their services and I learned what I, what I didn't like about it. So therefore I thought, well, I never want to do this and I never want to do this and I would like to do this. I also worked at this Beaches family practice for four years and we were kind of an open aired venue in that we had all these different doctors, you know, we had like every type of doctor and the doors were all open. So you could often overhear conversations between the doctor and the patient. And one I remember in particular was an ear, nose, throat, and sinus guy asking him, basically, he couldn't breathe, he couldn't smell, couldn't do anything. He never asked him about his diet. He never asked him about he drank water. Then the next hall down, next one down the room, this guy was a gastroenterologist. This person was suffering from massive constipation, just horrible constipation. He, the doctor, in fact, was overweight and he never even asked the guy, what do you eat? And I thought, there is something really, really wrong with this. So whatever the modality you're practicing or you're going to be practicing, becoming a detective is the secret in developing rapport and keeping your clients for 20 years. And I'm going to get into this. I do not use a questionnaire because I did use a questionnaire in the beginning. The client would come in, the questionnaire would be filled in. I would flip through the pages. It didn't allow me to have a conversation with these people. So I, oh yeah, you know, you had your gallbladder. Out. Oh, you broke your arm when you were 14. You, you had a C-section. It didn't allow me to banter back and forth so that I could get to know them. And one day when I was being a detective, my client said to me, nobody has ever asked me these questions ever before in my life. And I thought, good, we're on to something. Because when you ask these questions and then ask them in a, a particular way, they're going to feel heard, understood, respected, and accepted. So we really need to. I do not keep anything on the computer. I'm old fashioned. I sit with a clipboard and I just write notes. I'm old fashioned that way. And I understand. They come back. I look at this. So she's got whatever or he's got whatever. And I remember everything about that client. So it's really important that you ask the right questions. So let's talk about the questions. So your secret to success lies in your questions and you need to have powerful questions. So I'm just gonna give you some of them and then I'm gonna tell you what those questions are. Thought provoking. And, and of course, I, we've recorded this. So if you are on here tonight, we'll send this over to you. Thought provoking, challenging, playing, complex, add value, make them think indifferently, takes people to a whole new level, it triggers deep emotions. It's curious, creative, simple, enlightening. It pauses and slows them down. That's to actually say, uh, slow them down. Uh, it fires neurons and it changes their perception. So you want to 
get inside that person so you can understand what they really, really, really want. And what they really, really want, regardless of what they come, they want you to listen to them and to help them in any way that you can. And when you've done that and they can walk out of your office feeling better about themselves, you've done that job. And that they tell five more people, five more people, five more people. I worked with a woman uh, who owns a spa and we developed this incredible rapport. Uh, her sister lost almost like 90 pounds. They just kept sending me clients and sending me clients and sending me clients, and sending me clients. Now, when people do that, I always honor them by taking them out for dinner, you know, bringing them a Christmas present. I would stop often uh, with flowers and I, and any of my good clients, I do that. And it's really important that we acknowledge that because if somebody's happy, they're going to tell everybody and somebody's not happy. They're also going to tell everybody too. So make sure you take care of those people because one client like Dell computers, she changed my life in that second because I treated her. I had no idea who she was like everybody else there. And that really paid off for me. So there's so many magic questions, but let me actually go back for a second. Cause I think, oopsie, I'm not the best at this. So just give me one second here. Oh, did I go the wrong way? Yes. Thank you. It's always good to have somebody here. Okay. So take your paper and pen. Um, and I don't have a, uh, I never really have a formal way of asking these questions, but let's just say you walked into my office and my first question is, why'd you come here today? What do you want? Like they, they, they're, they're here. They want something. So what do you, what do you, what, what do you want? What, what can I help you with? Well, I want to lose weight. I've got arthritis. I've got constipation. I want to have a baby. Uh, I want to, you know, I want to get rid of my acne. Okay. So we understand exactly because there was a long time ago, a lady came in and she had a skin problem and I ended up working on her weight and she got mad at me because she wanted her psoriasis gone, but I helped her lose 20 pounds, but the psoriasis didn't disappear. So she was upset because what she really wanted was a psoriasis spirit. My methodology was to help her lose weight. Now that I know that, I would spend all my time talking about psoriasis and help her understand more that we will do that if we're able, we'll be able to help your psoriasis if we lose the weight. So, so what do you want? Why did you come here today? How did you find me? Because if that friend of mine, Jackie, sent me a client, and Jackie's another lady that sends me clients all the time, and I'm so grateful. Uh, I want to know because I want to thank her for that. So find out where they came from. Um, and then I asked some questions like, how do you feel from one to 10? Uh, what's your energy like when you wake up in the morning? Does your energy wane in the afternoon? Do you ever need to have a nap during the daytime? What is your stress levels from one to 10? How do you manage your stress? Do you do anything for your stress? Where does that stress land? Do you lose your appetite? Do you want to sleep more, eat more, eat salt, eat sugar? Are you going to the bathroom? Is it easy for you to go to the bathroom? Do you go more than once a day? Are you able to sleep? Can you fall asleep? Can you stay asleep? Do you get enough sleep? Do you exercise? Do you exercise on the weekends? Can you take a holiday? If you take a holiday, can you relax or do you need to jump around? Do you get headaches? Do you take Advil? Do you take Tylenol? Do you have any cardiac problems? Do you have any, uh, do you have any pain in your body? Where is that pain? How do you manage that pain? Um, so it's a really inquisitive type of question and that's going to give you an answer. And then even sometimes I'll, I'll run this through on a scale of one to 10, where's your sleep at? On a scale of one to 10, where is your uh, interest in nutrition? If you went to a restaurant, what are you going to eat? Do you look at the menu or you just grab anything you want? Because that's a great question. Because when you go to a restaurant, for me, the first thing I look at is salads. First thing. Second thing I look at is the protein. The last thing I look at is desserts because I don't really care about that. So I want to know when they go into that restaurant, what do they want to eat? So that I know what's firing them. What is, what is making them happy? So I have this huge list of questions. And when we do our other webinar, I'll, I'll, I'll actually write them all down for you. But 
it's a really, really great thing to do. How much water do you drink? Do you drink coffee? Do you drink tea? Then I do a one day diet history. And the reason I only do a one day diet history is because people lie. They're not going to tell you everything. So what you have for breakfast, what you have for lunch, what you have for dinner. Let's just say they had an egg McMuffin for breakfast, a double the double coffee. And then for uh, lunch, they had pizza with Coca-Cola. So remember, no judging, right? So therefore, I would say to them, hey, Johnny, you know what? It's not what you're eating, it's what you're missing. What you're missing is your vitamins. You're missing your nutrients. You're missing your fiber. You're missing your water. How about we change your diet to this, this, and this? So when you take stuff away from people, they don't like it. When you add things into people's diet, they like it. Because nobody wants to be told, no coffee, no smoking, no this, no that. Just add and add and add. Because you can't really have eight Coca-Colas a day if you've had 12 glasses of water because you simply won't be able to do it. So the diet thing is really simple for me. But I get right down to the nitty gritty of what it is that they're looking for so that we can figure out exactly what kind of, you know, where are we going? So if I've got a client with arthritis or diabetes, type 2 diabetes, I'm putting through all these questions and then I'm going to measure her belly and measure her thigh and measure, I'm going to talk to her about visceral fat or him. I'm going to talk to them about uh, a natural way of losing weight, which is the metabolic balance program. I'm going to talk about the value of that, how it works, how it changes insulin. I'm going to give them a suggestion. Here's suggestion one. I think you should do this or suggestion two. I remove myself from that in environment and say, it's really up to you. If you push anything on people, they're not going to buy it. Years and years ago, I bought my first BMW and I was in the sales room, actually at the sales room guy's desk. He says to me, his name was Tony, Jane, there's the high-end car that's got this and this and this and this and this and this and, this, and it's got this, but it's like $10,000 more. And there's this one. It's, it's considered the little bit lower end. It's got this, 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 and this, and this. And then he just turned his head and said, it's up to you to you decide. Well, get, well get, 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 guess what car I bought? I bought the high-end one. I do exactly the same thing with my clients. I basically give them an option, option one or option two. We can do a full session with you today. I can do a little bit. It's up to you because I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm not attached to the money. When it comes to working with the clients, if you're ever worried about the money, it's not worth it. You should be doing these jobs where money is the bonus at the end of it. Of course, you need money to survive. But if I'm always thinking 90 minutes, I have to get her out of here. It's 120 or $150. I don't do that. If I need my session to go over, I allow myself to do that. So it just gives me ample time to do that. So really get creative in your questions and write them down because they'll be happy about that. And then at the end of all of that, you repeat back to them. So let me get this straight, Harry. You're 61 years old. You've had diarrhea for 10 days. You only take two medications. You work full time. You uh, have an addiction to chocolate, which is Hershey's chocolate. I repeat back to them whatever they say. And they're like, yeah, that's that. They really know now that you've listened to them. And then sometimes we need to deepen the conversation. So you could even ask them things like, you know, how so? How do you mean? These are kind of grammatically incorrect, but they, it, we, they will elaborate and repeat the key word. So if someone says I'm unhappy, then unhappy, unhappy about what? And one of my favorite ones is, um, uh, what's his name? Big guy, Tony Robbins. I went to a couple of Tony Robbins events and he used a great line and I used this on my clients all the time. And let's just say, the client, I ask the client, so what do you want? And they'll say, well, I don't know. I don't know. So I'll turn to them and I say, I know you don't know, but if you did know, what would it be? And they're like, well, I'd want to lose 25 pounds right now. So that completely changes them. So this is a great question. I know you don't know, but if you did know, what would it be? It's, I use it all the time. It's phenomenal. I just, I just love it. So get inquisitive, get fun, get curious with them. Um, Develop that rapport because the best part about my job is I have friends, like I have so many friends from all of this. They have now become my really, Carol from Dell is a really, really good friend of mine. I still work with her husband. Her, you know, I know all her family. We just, it's, it's really it's such a rewarding thing. And to know that you're helping people too, it just makes such a world of difference. So other ways you can deepen the conversation here, I'm trying to keep pulling this out of my ear here. 
may I ask you, would it be okay? You say that you, what do you want? What are you doing right now? How's that working for you? People need to feel heard, respected, accepted, and understood. <clears throat> a couple of years ago, I had a couple come in who wanted to have a baby. And they'd already had three rounds of in vitro fertilization. And they'd already spent like, I don't know, $50,000. So I didn't know these questions back then. Excuse me. What do you want? Well, we want a baby. What are you doing right now? Well, we're doing in vitro. How's that working for you? It didn't work for them. That's why they're here. So I didn't ask these questions. I put them on the metabolic balance program, which is helps to balance out the hormones. And that night I got back a call and they're like, you know what? We changed our mind. But the reason they changed their mind is I didn't sell it because I did emphasize, what do you want? A baby? What are you doing right now? In vitro? How's that working? Well, it's not really working. So then let's talk about an alternative way for you to, to find something that's going to make it work for you. And it was a big lesson for me. And obviously they needed to do what they needed to do. And I am completely fine with that. And if somebody calls me tomorrow and says, you know what, yesterday was great, but I just, I don't want to go ahead with your program. I'm happy. I'll give your money back because I don't want anybody that's not going to be happy with that. So really pay attention to what it is that you want. And a lot of people want, they want to feel better. They want to look better. They want to get into their summer clothes. And trust me now with all of us at home during COVID with spring coming, I think there's going to be a ton of business for a lot of people out there once this starts to settle down. So salting, we talked about that earlier. Teach, sell, teach, sell, teach, sell. Salt your point, make them thirsty, and make them hang on to your words. And I've sold more programs standing naked in the shower at yoga talking about my program because they're like, oh my God, that lady, she lost how much weight? How she feels this much better? Yeah, because I'm just teaching and selling and teaching and selling. So I'm dropping little tidbits. Think about, you know, you've got some crumbs and you're just going to leave the crumbs everywhere you go. You walk into a store. How's it, how's it going? Great. My business is great. I've got to go. I got to take care of my clients. So, you know, and hopefully that that's true too, but uh, cause people get curious when they hear that you're busy and it's nice to know now, I mean, what a great opportunity to develop and hone your skills while we're at home because we've got more time to do that. So really salting is such an incredible thing to be able to do for people. And then there's three types of doors. So you've sold your program or whatever you're giving to them, but there's three kinds of doors. An open door, basically that person heard what you have to offer and they're going to buy it. Closed door, they're definitely not going to buy it. But the squeaky door is that client that's like, says, I don't know. And when they go, I don't know, it's because you didn't get them across the threshold. You did not explain to them pain and solution pain and solution. So squeaky door, here's the pain, visceral fat puts an incredible amount of cytokines in your system, causing your diabetes to go up, heart disease to go up, cardiovascular problems to go up, high blood pressure to go up. We got to lose this visceral fat. The way we're going to do that is we're going to balance out insulin. We're going to balance out your hormones. We're going to use the metabolic balance program and you can lose five to 20 pounds in the first two weeks. And it's individualized, it's customized. And they're like, holy crap, that sounds amazing. They are going through that threshold, but you got to explain to them all the details of all of that without jamming anything down their throat. We all know what it feels like to walk into any store and somebody shoves something into your face. Uh, I, I can't stand that. I don't want to. I want to be able to feel it out and I want to be able to have the opportunity. And lots of times people don't buy on the spot with me. And I always say, you know, take your time if you want, come back, and, you know, but usually when they walk out the door, they're not coming back. So we know that occasionally they do, but you want to make sure that you've sold this, sold it to them. And of course, you can't sell what you have not bought yourself. So, you know, you can't, you can't sell a Lamborghini if never sat in a Lamborghini car. You can't sell a pair of shoes if you don't own a pair of Birkenstocks. You can't. You can't sell them because you don't know what it feels like. So what I love about all the things that I've been doing from a modality is live blood. I poke myself all the time. Energy medicine, I'm always taking remedies. Live blood or uh, metabolic balance, I follow the rules. Um, I believe in it. I believe in everything about it because in, when you believe in it, then you can sell anything to anybody. Objections, I can't afford it. Then they have not been convinced and they're convinced the confused mind never buys. So remember, can't lives on won't street. So they're, they're done. They're not going to, they can't afford it. 
And when they say, I'm going to talk to my husband about it, or I'm going to talk to my wife about it, they again, they haven't been convinced. Because if I said to you, I could send you to Portugal for $9.99, you're going to go business class, you're going to stay at the Ritz Carlton for five nights for $9.99, and you're going to have a river cruise, you'd find $9.99 tomorrow. I know for a fact you would do that. I'm not asking my husband if I can have $9.99. So when they say I'm going to ask somebody, they haven't been convinced. So you really need to explain to them what program you're offering them, what are you going to do for them, and how it's going to work. So when my clients come in, I always say to them, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you lots of questions. We're going to do some testing, and I'm going to suggest some different protocols for you. And if you have any questions afterwards, you can definitely get in contact with me, and I'd be happy to help answer those questions for you. So I'm going to open it up for some questions. Um, or do you want to do the other thing first? Go ahead. Give me one second. It's going to stop the 